it's not a matter of if, it could be a matter of when. My entire life has consisted of school shootings. From witnessing school shootings on TV and even here at home. We need to lock down. To a lifetime of active shooter drills. This is their reality. You start to understand that a bad person potentially with a weapon could come into your classroom and start like hurting people. It has to stop. Gun violence in general has to stop. Earlier this week, I introduced you to a group of students and recent graduates from across the metro ages 12 to 23. The goal was to give them a chance to feel seen and heard. Tonight as part of that, I took their concerns to a child psychologist with Children's Mercy. We played portions of that conversation for her so she could offer advice for students and parents alike. So we'll go ahead and get started. Once you go into like older grades, you start to understand that a bad person, potentially with a weapon, could come into your classroom and start like hurting people. We started changing our mindset to it's not a matter of if, it could be a matter of when. So I think having that change in mindset has helped in some ways because when you're expecting it to happen and it doesn't, then it's a win-win, and if you're expecting it to happen and it does, then at least you're more prepared than being completely blindsided. So anything about that that, that really strikes you? It's pretty consistent with what I'm hearing from patients, um, that these, these drills really bring about the reality of gun violence in schools for kids, and they occur pretty frequently in schools, and so every time they occur, it brings that reality to kind of the forefront of their thinking. Um, it's disheartening to hear students say things like, it's not if, but when. How do you respond as a parent, or what advice would you have for kids themselves who might be, be watching this if these drills are causing anxiety? I think we all start with the basic foundation of providing reassurance of safety. Schools can provide reassurance of safety, providers, parents, that kids are safe and here are the things that we are doing to keep you safe. We're doing these drills to keep you safe so that you understand what to do in a moment of panic if this situation were ever to come up and that's the point of the drills. These are some of the things the students shared with us in terms of um, things that have either worried them, scared them based on what they've seen, the drills they've done. So. And when I was like growing up I had a fear of going to the bathroom by myself because I always was scared if there was a person who came in with a gun that I would be stuck in the bathroom and I have to lock the um, stall door and stand on top of the toilet while somebody is going through our school with a gun. I just wanted to add that um, I would really like to have children someday but the top thing that comes to mind for me is dropping my child off to school that is absolutely terrifying and something that I think about all the time and I'll think about in the future when I decide to have children as well. You know we talked about it's not just in schools how many of you show of hands have ever felt unsafe, or maybe you find yourself looking at exits, whether it's at a parade, whether it's at a concert, whether it's at the grocery store, at church, at school. Show of hands, how many of you no longer feel safe in these large public gatherings? I mean, how do you approach fears like these? Are these reasonable or these unreasonable fears? I think it's important that we don't minimize fears. We validate them and really remember I think we want to solve. We want to take away pain. We want to make things better. But sometimes kids just want us to listen. Our job is really to be the vessel for their fears and their worries and just hold it while they work through it, not necessarily to fix it for them. The idea that last point was the one I think that really struck me the most because, you know, as moms, we want to fix everything. Yeah. And you think that, especially in our industry, we should be able to find the answers. And she said, it's okay. You don't have to have the answers. Just to be able to say, hey, I hear you. I'm listening and I'll do everything in my power to keep you safe, that that's enough. Really hard hearing the kids talk about how they're coming to some of these conclusions and how they're trying to reason with and reckon with the world that they're forced to grow up in. Yeah, it's, it's unbelievable. This was such a great group, and I really appreciate their vulnerability and their honesty with us. You know, this did get me thinking, though, maybe there are some resources that could help us parents to start these conversations. Yeah. Today, I reached out to the Johnson County Library just to ask them for some suggestions. Here are some they shared with me. First, On the News. This is a book that helps kids understand the tragedies they see on TV, not just school shootings, but natural disasters 
answers all kinds of things. Also, What to Do When the News Scares You. That's a book about helping kids process, again, scary events and stories. And then this one is specifically for us parents. When the World Feels Like a Scary Place. That's a book that can help address our kids' anxiety. And I was actually discussing this in the newsroom with one of our producers, and she came across this just today, matter of fact. It's a new book just released. She saw this posted on social media. It's about a girl who feels anxious after an active, scooter drill, active shooter drill at school. Again, our experts said books like these can be a great way to start those conversations at home just to get you talking. Meanwhile, coming up this Friday, we're going to focus on the changes our panelists say would make them feel safer in school.